Live from New Orleans, it's theCUBE. Covering Veeam on 2017. Brought to you by Veeam. Welcome back to the Bayou, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante, and I'm here with Stu Miniman. This is Veeam on 2017. Two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage from theCUBE. Harley Carter is here as a solution architect at Scania. We're going to have a case study on transportation. Talk to the customers. We love when we get the practitioners on. We can pick your brain about what's really <laughs> happening. Harley, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks yeah, for thank coming you. on. Thanks for having me. How's, uh, how's the conference going? What do, you, what do you think of Veeam on? Yeah, it's good. I mean, same for us. Veeam's becoming more of a sort of strategic part of our business now. You know, we rely on it more and more. So excited to be here and learn some of the new features, what's coming. Great, we'll we come back to that. Uh, and, and I want to ask you um, to set up your business a little bit. Tell us about your business. You know, Scania Transportation Company, huge company actually. Mm -hmm. and many, many tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of employees. Uh, what's your business all about? What are the drivers in your business that are driving technology? Yeah, so our business set up, um, so I work for Scania in the UK, and we act as the main sort of wholesaler for the UK and we also own half of the retail network in the UK so we have sort of two pronged attack really so we're responsible for bringing the vehicles into the country and shipping them out to our distributors and then we also sell direct to the customer as well so you know th those two main bits of focus for us and I think like most other companies at, at the moment we, we're finding that more and more of our services are changing to being digital services um, we sort of position ourselves in the market as you know, the premium product. We're considerably more expensive than some of the competitors, and then obviously to back that up, we have to, you know, we have to give the, you know, the full service, and we have to give great service to the customers and great backup services. Um, so we're moving to more and more supporting services around the trucks. Um, so for example, we sell like telematics packages, driver training packages, and. Um, you know, a lot of those are more more digital than than we used to be. We're not not really an engineering company anymore. So. Okay, so the priority really is to drive new sources of value through digital. Yeah, uh, yeah as yeah, opposed yeah. to, I mean, a lot of times when we ask that question, we hear do more with less, cut cost. That sort of table stakes is mm, what, yeah, I'm, yeah. what I'm I think referring. I think we're past that stage yeah. now, and we're, we're having to add more and more and more value to the customer to. You know, to keep our, our sort of proposition as, as the premium brand. So telematics as an example, you're saying you're embedding telematics into your products and providing yeah, other so telematics services? Yeah, so every truck we sell comes with a sort of full telematics package and then um, depending on the customer needs, you know, if they're a large fleet customer or a, you know, we have some, some sort of small people who own their own truck, like owner drivers, right. um, they can subscribe to different levels of the package and it gives them a lot more information about their driving habits, um, say for fleet customers, they can track vehicles, and um, for one of the, the biggest costs for our large fleet customers is fuel for the vehicles, and you know, we sell telematics and training packages which you know, helps them reduce their fuel consumption, and so it, it adds a lot of monetary value for them as well as just you know, increased uptime for the vehicle. And so that's a cloud-based service, yep, obviously. Yep, yep. Okay, and so you've got to protect the data. It's all about mm -hmm. data. Digital is all about data. That's 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 one thing that's clear. But digital transformation, it gets really fuzzy. But it's data. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so you got to protect the data. So you have to architect a solution uh, around that. So paint a picture of your environment. You know, if we you know had to draw a schematic, what would it look like? Can you describe sort of the? We got the telematics piece, but what other sort of apps are you supporting? What's the infrastructure look like? And very importantly, how are you protecting the data? Yeah, so our infrastructure, we're pretty much, well, I'd say 95% virtualized these days. Um, we're all, all VMware. Um, we do have a small like, Hyper-V environment for music, uh, Citrix VDI, but actual server and applications is all in VMware. Um, we have a main data center at our head office in Milton Keynes, which is so a bit north of London. So pretty much everything is hosted internally within that data center. And then we have a, a co-location facility, which is about 30 miles away. Uh, we just we rent rack space in another, another data center. Um, so historically, we were you know, purely on site. And then more recently, we've, we started to try and move to 
keeping things available across the two data centers. And you know, Veeam helps us with that in the uh, you know, actual backups and recoveries and replication between the data centers. And what are the key apps that you're sort of managing? Um, we have pretty much everything, I guess. So we have you know, SQL databases, uh, we use Microsoft Dynamics, CRM. Um, we have lots and lots of internal web apps and Windows applications that, that have been developed internally. Um, we have small SharePoint installation. So we have, we're mostly Microsoft based, but mm -hmm. within the Microsoft stack, we've, <laughs> we've probably got most of the products in, in one place or another. And her, you mentioned the word availability. What does that mean to your business? You know, how critical is it to, for you know you, you to be always on? Um, from the retail side, the customer facing side, most of our depots do operate 24/7. So they will have customers coming in and out all day, every day, you know, all night, 365 days of the year. So the actual retail systems have to be online all the time. Um, as we mentioned, some of the more sort of online systems now for customers, um, you know, obviously they're designed like online systems are that the customers can access them wherever they are, whenever they need. Those have to be online all the time. Um, and then as we support the retail network with a lot of back-end systems, um, we provide IT services for some of our independent dealers as well. So you know, if they sign up to be a Scania dealer, they use some of our central systems. So we have to support those employees, the actual Scania employees. Um, a lot of those aren't 24-7, but still you know, from early to late in the evening, there are people working all the time. And, and what, what do you see it for, from an IT standpoint? Right, You've got your customers, some of those have other customers mm -hmm. there. Um, you know, speak a little bit to kind of the, the role of IT that it plays in driving the business uh, forward. Yeah, I think it's it's becoming more and more realised that IT is a business driver you know, rather than the the cost that we were <laughs> probably seen as historically. And um, it's still bloody expensive. It, it is. There's no getting around <laughs> that. But someone's got to pay for it. But but uh, at least people, you know, seeing the benefits. But we are, as we said, trying to create new services and things for the customers. Right. So we're having to ensure that we have the infrastructure in place so that we can roll out new products and services, you know, go to market quicker, uh, you know, the agility that is being mentioned all the time now for, for these digital transformations. So it's, I think, making sure that we're in a good position to be able to react to business demands and to supply the business with whatever they need yes. when they need it. You, you said that Veeam's becoming more strategic to, to your operations. Mm -hmm. do, do you have any you know, key metrics you could share with you know, your, your peers in the industry? You know, what, what did you get by deploying it? You know, sleep easier? You, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's to, a big you know, one. You know, be able to do other things? What would what, what, what yeah. some of the key, key results? I guess some of the main benefits for us is that it, it is simple to use. More and more has been added to the product all the time, but it's simple to set up and it does just work. So you know, with uh, the, the solutions we had before, we were never 100% confident that you know, should a disaster happen that we, we would really be able to rely on everything. Yeah, that, that, that we, was we the do, dirty secret always. It's DR, yeah. you know, maybe you tested it, but didn't test it as much. Now, do, do you run regular tests on yeah, this? Yeah, we so? do run regular tests, and um, some of the built-in tools within Veeam give us those options, the sort of automated options, the sure backup and sure replica. So we get automatic verification that the backup jobs have actually worked and that we can restore machines and data from them. So definitely takes a lot of the guesswork out of it, um, which as you say helps us <laughs> sleep easier. Harley, how would you describe your data protection strategy? Do you offer, a, so think, uh, presuming data protection as a service, and you've got mm -hmm. different service levels for different workloads, different applications, right? So yep. how do you approach architecting that generally and specifically where does Veeam fit? Uh, so Veeam for us does cover pretty much the whole range of it, so we okay. use it for backups. For, That's you know, your primary time. data protection that, that platform. Is, that is basically okay. it, yeah. So, I mean, we do have actual storage-based replication between the data centers, so I guess we have that level, but as far as actual recovery in a disaster, then, then we do rely on Veeam a lot, so we use it, you know, disk backups, tape backups, we use pretty much all the features that we can to Want to try and <laughs> leverage that investment as much as possible? Is it essentially a perpetual incremental? You know, once you seed, uh, the yes, base? we do use we do use it in that mode. 
So we have perpetual incrementals uh, which back up to our main site. Uh, those copies or those backups then get copied over to the disaster recovery site, the co-location center. Okay. Um, and then the copies at that site then get taken off the tape as okay. well. And then also at the, the DR center, um, it uses like the grandfather, father, son backup scheme. So <coughs> we have shorter term retention that's duplicated across both sites, long term retention at the, the colo sites, and then also tape backups. And when you sit right. down, well, to, do you sit down with a line of business to determine <coughs> sort of the value of the, the data that you're protecting? Or do you sort of provide that estimate? Do you speak in terms of RPO and RTO to the business, or do you talk in different terms, like on a scale of one to 10, how important is this data? Um, or how much money do you have to spend? Or do you not, you know, do, you not do chargebacks? Help us understand how uh, you decide. We don't do chargebacks. Okay, so, so we don't, we don't, don't, probably don't go into as, as much detail as if we did, but, but um, there's been a more of a company-wide uh, business continuity project going on recently. Okay. So we have had to have those conversations with pretty much all the business areas, all you, the applications. Have, yeah, so you know, how important is it? How long can you live without it? What are your backup plans should the system be unavailable? You know, um, of course, if you ask people how often they, <laughs> they want it backed up, how much can they afford to lose? Everyone says nothing. No, and then, then, then you figure out. But then they think about it a bit more. And how many millions come to, they have yeah, to spend. Yeah, exactly, they come to more realistic estimates. So okay, but so be you, a, guys, a range. you guys are responsible for pro providing that level of service based on the results of that survey, if I can call yeah, it yeah. that. Yeah, that's right. And it's your job to make sure that you're constantly refreshing that, that, le that service level. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And then, right. and then living up to it. And, and so, and so you're able to offer, if I understand it correctly, a very high degree of granularity? Uh, yeah, we have a few different options. I mean, when we roll in new products or new services, you know, we have a, a default, if you know what I mean. So you know, by default, it will be backed up this often. We'll keep this many copies, we'll replicate this often. But then, as you say, we, we discussed with the business, is that acceptable? You know, does it need to be that often? Does it need to be more? And so we right. can tailor quite simply and then, you know, there are a lot of different options in Veeam and lots of different ways of doing basically the same thing, but it, it makes it simple for us. We don't have to invest a huge amount of time tailoring solutions to different applications, you know, a couple of tick boxes and <laughs> change a few numbers and, and we're, we're basically there. And does security considerations come into the discussion of backup at all? It, it does. I mean, I guess with some of the more recent attacks and things, we've had to start thinking about it a bit more, you know, like separate networks and you know, trying to go into the technicalities of sort of air gapping some of the, the actual backups more than we, we did in the past. So I don't know, I, I don't think we're 100% there yet with that side of things, but it's definitely higher on the agenda than it used to be. And how about cloud? You know, we've heard some announcements today, we've heard sort of a strategy that is sort of on-prem, on-prem to cloud, cloud mm -hmm. to on-prem, cloud to cloud. Where are you with, with, with um, cloud and how are you At the moment we are entirely on-prem. Okay. There are a couple of SaaS apps that we use, but we don't actually have any VMs or anything in the cloud at all. Um, okay. And that, so that's, that's, I guess it's been more historical than anything. Our, our parent company have a very heavy sort of R&D focus. Mm -hmm. So all the actual research on the trucks happens in Sweden. Um, and they've been quite anti-cloud, I guess, in the so sort of IP concerns. So, you, so your telematics offering is your cloud? It, it is, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. so you're so a cloud service provider yeah, so as all well. Yeah, so all the data goes. Everybody's becoming a cloud service provider or a software company, it's all yeah. part of the yeah, digital yeah, yeah. transformation, I guess, right? <laughs> it all changed. Yeah. So the last question is, is you know, again, we come back to the show, things you've learned, you know, I mean, you know, what brought you here? Take some of the takeaways. Yeah, so as I said, it is becoming quite a strategic part of our our infrastructure solution. So one of the, the things for me here was to learn what's next. So you know, we like to stay up to speed and try and try and plan <laughs> as far 